Right, morning YouTube, how are we all doing? Time for another review. So, um, it's going to be a tobacco review this morning, but I've uh, been sent my itinerary for my trip to Cuba, so I just thought I'd make you all feel a little bit jealous and uh, go through what I'll be doing in that week. So I'm not going until March, so I've got a little bit more time to get ready yet. But, um, whoops. But this is what we're going to be doing. Uh, first day I get there, dead. Go eat food. Second second day, uh, nice tour around Havana. I can't wait for that one. Um, in the afternoon, we get to go and visit more of old Havana and visit all the local big cigar shops. Then on the Tuesday, we're visiting the v Vieira and Hoya de Monterey plantations, including the tobacco fields, the curing bonds, and the stripping houses. Uh, the next day we go to the Hay Chupman factory in the morning and then hopefully the Huerto factory, the Cohiba factory in the afternoon. Um, then on the second day, on the fifth day, the Thursday, we go to the ICT factory, it produces all the machine made Cuban cigars. Uh, ba -ba -da -ba -da, where are we? And then on the Friday, that's pretty much it, that's the end of all the tobacco tours. Sorry about that, on the Thursday I'm also going to visit Habanos SA, the uh, kind of the government export office meet and greet some of the people there and then it looks like it's just a couple of days of fun I can't wait I really cannot wait I am um, gonna get to try some interesting Cuban cigars I'm going for the things you can't get in this country so I go for some of the Belinda's and try a few more of the um, the Fleur de Canos if you can pick some up so anyway back to the main purpose of this of this video um, I'm going to be smoking some Troost, some Troost Sizes. Um, good friend of mine, Beast, or Bobby Van Sassen as he's known on uh, on YouTube, went back and uh, picked me up a couple of tins. I didn't see this the first time I went over, but I didn't go to enough tobacco shops really. So um, I'm going to be smoking this in my, uh, my Mario Grande, my uh, rather large love it that I got from uh, AD, AD's Pipes. I absolutely love this stem. I just love the wide, the bit of it. it just, Hold, I don't have to grip it too hard, which for a pipe this sort of size, I expected it would. But anyway, so this has been opened already. Um, the guys, in for some reason, opened the tobacco when they was over in Amsterdam. Out of the tin, it's got that typical kind of Dutch Cavendish sort of a slightly Virginia, slightly, I mean, sorry. A slightly sweetened, like um, not quite maple, not kind of a honey tang to the otherwise the fresh kind of Virginia aroma from it. Uh, the flakes are quite light. This is uh, this is what the flakes are like. Predominantly light. There is a few darker bits in there. It looks like it's packed full of stems. Good old mass production, eh? So um, I'm going to load this up. So I'm just going to pack and fold for the bottom half of the bowl. And tuck her in. Now, one flake should do it. Gonna have left a bit of a. a bit of a combustion chamber at the bottom. Yep, that drawer is quite nice. Again, you can taste that kind of typical Dutch Cavendish sort of tang to it. It's got to say that crisp, almost kind of like citrusy tang to the Virginia, and there is that very sweet, like I say, part maple, part honey sort of, <coughs> good start, uh, kind of maple, honey kind of topping to the tobacco. So I'm just going to light this up, and I'll give you my first impressions, I will crack on, and I'll be back with the first half, so just bear with me. That's very, very smooth and creamy. Um, it's a rather light smoke. What kind of a
had a very, very sweet, almost fruity kind of tang to it. You can still taste all the tobaccos through there. I say the, the taste of the Virginias is very, very, very prevalent, very well pronounced. It's So yeah, to start off with, I say it's got that almost honey, honey kind of mapley sweetness to it. It's very, very creamy. There's subtle hints of butter cookie. Very, very buttery. I find a lot of uh, a lot of Dutch Cavendishes. Even though this is a flake, it's in essence it's still just a sliced Cavendish. So I'm gonna have a bit of a jiggle with this get it burning a bit more freely and I shall, I shall be back to give you a review of the first half. So I'll see you in a moment, I'll crack just on. A few, just a few quick notes so far on this first half. Um, the sweetness is building. Um, I find this with a lot of, say Dutch style tobaccos, it's a very, like it feels like a thick, sticky coating on the inside of your mouth. Um, as you'd expect with, again, most Dutch tobaccos, it does get a little bit warm if you smoke it too fast but no so far it's a, a pleasant mild it's getting a lot sweeter as I smoke way through I can barely taste hints of the tobacco now it's got a very very strong sort of like flavoured sugars and um, sugars sugars kind of um, mapley honey sort of flavours to it but um but yeah I shall crack on so I'm halfway through now the uh, the true slices. Um, I refer to it as a Dutch. And actually, it does say I don't think you're going to read it. it just say just here, uh, original recipe imported from Holland. Now on the other side, just here, it says made in Denmark. Good old Scandinavian tobacco, eh? All production moved to the oil factory. But. First half's progressed. Um, I pretty much taste nothing, nothing off the tobaccos. Um, it does have a slightly acrid kind of bitter finish to it every so often, which is not not very pleasant to be honest. Um, other than that, like I can say it's still very very creamy, ridiculously sweet. Reminds me a little bit of Larson's number 32. Um, not as sticky as the Larson's 32, but it's along along those lines. It tastes a lot better than the Troost we get in the UK. I mean, it's just the Troost Cavendish or the special Cavendish we get in the UK now. One of those two, anyway. But um, but yeah, so far it's 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 a pleasant smoke. Uh, it doesn't really carry a great deal of nicotine to it. Because I feel like I'll, I could do with a cigarette. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> but yeah, I say it's not very, not very complex. It's fairly bog standard, straightforward, smooth and creamy. Just get a little bit warm. Um, got a very, very sweet, almost butter cookie, but predominantly just like sweet sugars, maples, honeys, just generic sugars and things like that. There is still that very subtle kind of citrusy sort of kind of citrusy and buttery sort of flavour to it which I'm getting from the Virginia but that's slowly fading and fading and I'm just being replaced with sort of the sweet the sweet toppings basically the, the sugars and the honeys but like I say I'm going to keep going uh, but it's a fairly low look on its own it's a little bit Oh, don't tell me I've run out of flint. I know I have. But no, I can say it's pleasant. On the whole, it's enjoyable, but nothing, nothing spectacular, nothing to rant and rave about. So, um. 
I'm going to finish this bowl and I shall uh, be back to give you my uh, my final thoughts and the review of the last half. So I shall see you in a moment. Right. So I've come back up, uh, come back upstairs. Um, let's get this smoke moving around a bit in here. To finish this bowl off. Um, the last half is overly sweet. I feel a little bit. My mouth is just going to taste like Danish butter cookie. In the last half, it's pretty much exactly the same as Larson's. Um, probably a little bit warmer. It's still got this lovely kind of citrus undertone to it, but on the whole, it's quite very, very, like I say, very sweet, very mapley, very honey, very sugary. Typical, typical Dutch Cavendish tobacco. Um, I referred to this as very similar to a Dutch Cavendish. Now, Many of you saw in my, no, if you didn't, there's a series I did a while ago uh, called Pinning Down Cavendish, where I kind of talked about what Cavendish is. Now, Dutch Cavendish is pressed into a bar, generally broken down. This has been sliced into a flake. It's, it doesn't look as complex in its, um, it's kind of like its makeup as what other Cavendish tobaccos do. I say it's, it looks like it's predominantly Virginia's. Probably some burley in there. I do have a bit of a tingle, but not a great, not a great deal. Um, and I say it carries a small amount of nicotine, but not a, not a great amount of nicotine. If you're a, if you're a slave to Lady Anne, I know not all of you are. If you're a slave to Lady Anne, it's not the most rewarding smoke ever. But it's not. No, it's, done it's not the most pleasant smoke I've ever had. It's not the most disgusting smoke I've ever had. It's got some interesting characters to it. It's just too much, too much sweet, sweet sugars added to this for me. It's just too much. I can't. I couldn't smoke this all day as an all-day smoke. I'm assuming after you've smoked it half a dozen times, a dozen times, you get used to this little sweet casing in the mouth. But that puts me off a lot of tobaccos. Um. If I was to try and compare it to something else available in the UK, it would be a slightly less sweetened version of um, Gareth and Hogger's DVC, which again I used in the Pinning Down Cavendish series. It's kind of it's a, a medium strength Virginia, so I mean the Gower's DVC has got more power to this, but it's more sweetness. This is basically a much more mellowed version of it. So if you want to try and find a comparison in the UK, you could take some DVC and you could mix in some brown Cavendish with it kind of take the edge off a little bit or like I say um, you've got W.O. Larson's Curly Flake number 32 excuse me number 32 I believe it is and again while I'm on that subject I guess Galvin Hogg's Curly Cut Deluxe is very similar too so yeah this is the uh, this has been the true the true slices um, like I just said it's it's a pleasant smoke it's nothing spectacular um, I wouldn't really say it's disgusting but it's just not not my sort of thing um, so like I say, this has been Larson's, uh, Larson's, this has been through Slicers, spoke to my Mario Grande, rather large, love it. So thank you very much for watching, there will be more videos to come. Uh, at some point this afternoon, after I've been to see family and all that kind of stuff, I'm hoping to smoke some of the, uh, some Nat Sherman Slicers. Uh, this was bought in 2009, has been sat in a... Uh, he's not a customer anymore, he's a good friend of mine um, from down in London. He sent me some of this up. Well, this stuff smells amazing. Um, so I'll be back later, back later with a review of that one. It's kind of a broken flake, it really has broken down, but I really am, really am looking forward to giving this one a whirl this afternoon. So like I say, thank you very much for watching. I'll catch up with you all very, very soon. And uh, oh, just one more thing I wanted to say. Um, I've now hit 301 subscribers. Big thanks to uh, uh, Mr. Blink182ish. Uh, you're my 301st subscriber. Thank you very, very much. And um, so like I say, I'll be back later with more videos. Thanks to all of you for, who have subscribed. Everybody who comments. Sorry I don't get back to you all. There's just not enough time. So I'll see you all soon. Take care, folks. Goodbye.